France has declared itself at war since November the 13th, 2015. On that fateful day, terrorist attacks in Paris killed 130 people. In 18 months, France has been the target of three major terrorist attacks in which more than 230 people have died. The country has also been kept on edge and in a state of emergency by a succession of shocking but less bloody attacks and attempts to kill, often by lone extremists. From sub-Saharan Africa to the Middle East, France claims to be in the front line of the fight against Takfiri terrorist groups. It also claims to be the second biggest contributor to US-led airstrikes against Daesh in Iraq and Syria. Ahead of Thursday's Nice attack, President Francois Hollande announced that the Charles de Gaulle aircraft carrier, a symbol of French military power, was being deployed again in the Middle East. French Prime Minister Manuel Valls has spoken of a territorial, social and ethnic apartheid in some of the housing estates of Paris, which exploded into three weeks of rioting in 2005. Tensions with the police are never far from the surface in some of the rundown suburb estates with large immigrant populations where youth unemployment runs at more than 40%. Is France doing enough to protect the public against terrorist attacks? And will the French president's declaration of war make Western Europe more or less of a target? Simple questions with important answers. We began by asking the public here in Nice for their reaction to the recent attack and were they surprised by what had happened. Here's what they said. Bah, écoutez, I survived the attack because I had time to hide myself. They came like madmen. I was scared and I wasn't the only one. We went home and we shut the doors tight. I don't know why these people came. There weren't many of them, there were only two. Yes, I was surprised and uh, it was um, uh, it was very, very um, uh, heartfully and uh, I feel pain for, for all people uh, who were um, uh, in this situation. Horrible. C'était horrible ce qui est arrivé à Nice là. Pourquoi? It's horrible. What happens in Nice is horrible. It's really sad. It could have been better monitored. It should have been better monitored from the start of the incident before the incident took place. For these 84 people, they are now with the angels. It's really hard. It's really hard and emotional. I was very surprised considering it's Nice and it's sort of a tourist resort. And usually you expect that sort of thing in Paris, wouldn't you, to be honest? Um, so, uh, yeah, I was very shocked and for several days afterwards, maybe even a week, I was sort of coming to terms with what had happened, really, as I was quite close. I was just down there and about, about um, I must have been about 50 metres from, from when it occurred. The police pushed me out of the way to open fire. So, um, yeah, it was all pretty shocking and uh, afterwards we all sort of started running in that general direction. I think any attack, any terror attack, is always going to be surprising, uh, whether it's in the heart of the turbulent Middle East and in the heart of a war zone, or whether it is in the far more stable uh, European continent. I think an attack that targets many, many civilians will always be surprising and will always uh, force us to react negatively. It's very saddening to see that many people died. And I think, understandably, like most people who saw uh, the footage, I think it was a, you know, scenes were very saddening. And I was just as sad as I was surprised because, of course, however many uh, attacks we are likely to see in the near future, each and every one does come at a surprising time. And I think we can't, we can't really uh, avoid being surprised despite the number of times it happens. I was horrified and saddened when I heard of an attack that basically involved a lorry mowing down uh, innocent men, women and children who were going to a public festival. And one of my reactions was that I, I hoped it wasn't someone who was from the Muslim community in France. Um, but after looking at and seeing this, per regarding this person's background, 
it seemed that they were, they were isolated and individual. They weren't really part of the Muslim community in, in, a, in a way. But I know that the Muslim community will be blamed. As well as that, though, there's also that many of the victims, in addition to, um, uh, to just obviously this issue of this, this uh, concern over the Muslim community, but many of the victims themselves were also Muslims. And that that will be forgotten when there is uh, a possible anti-Muslim backlash against it. And so it was a very uh, horrific tragedy and it was um, something which I think everybody felt uh, when they heard about it. They felt uh, it was uh, sickened by it, completely sickened by it. The attacker used to be a heavy drinker, a drug user, a womanizer and a sufferer of psychological problems. Is France doing enough to protect the public against such people? I think no. I think that um, it should be more uh, I, I think that France must uh, do something more uh, with this situation. It is not enough to put some soldiers uh, on the road and uh, they just uh, walk in. But what, what can I do if it uh, will happen again? I don't understand. Alors, au sujet de protection de la France, France didn't prepare anything special to stop the attack, and then a lot of stuff happened. Unfortunately, we have suffered. I'm 85 years old, but I was scared like a little boy. I think, realistically, the only way that they could have prevented the attack was if they had have installed concrete barriers at the start and at the end of the promenade. Before the fireworks day that day, before the fireworks that night, I saw a police parade at the top next to where the old town is and in that police parade there must have been I don't know at least 50 vehicles and 100 odd police officers and so I thought they would have all been part of the protection that evening but what I assumed occurred is that they had a Bastille Day parade for the uh, emergency services whereupon they were given the evening off to enjoy the fireworks and so all of those officers that I had seen at the top of the beach, thinking they were our security for the day, turns out they weren't. Apparently, yes, yes. De toute façon, oui, c'est voilà, ça fait partie des 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 personnes qui sont fragiles dans leur vie. It looks like this guy was somebody that was very fragile in his personal life. He didn't have any gold, as he was lost, and he just did something really stupid. That leads to anger. It leads to hate. It leads to an act like this, which is not understandable, which is incomprehensible. We are shocked. We couldn't imagine that someone who just lives close to us, like that, could do such a thing. He is someone who could just bump into the street with you. Now we have become a bit paranoid. We meet people like him every day. Now we are thinking to ourselves. Now we are asking, what is he thinking? What is he going to do? It's not like it was before. Nice is a big city. It's a city, but at the same time, it's like a family. Everybody knows each other. I know friends who have lost friends, so I share their pain. I just feel there isn't the same energy as there was before. I think it's, it's never easy to protect uh, the pu public from any form of, of psychotic, psychopathic killer. Uh, but I think that what the question really indicates is that this man didn't have the profile of your uh, habitual terrorist. Uh, the normal terrorist will be level-headed. He will be prone to violence, of course, but I think he will avoid heavy drug use and heavy drinkers drinking because, of course, uh, orchestrating a major terror attack actually needs discipline. And I think this man really clearly shows that he was lacking all of these things. And I think what the profile really shows is that for all the situation that France is in, which is in it's a state of emergency, that it has been the target of ISIS uh, terror attacks in the past. Nevertheless, I think in this case, it really does show that this was just a madman who went on a killing spree, very, very similar to uh, the attack we saw last year from a German pilot who literally took his plane and rammed it inside a against a mountain, killing 150 people. I think it's very difficult, especially in a context of a very individualistic or atomized society, to try to mitigate against people who become isolated, loners, uh, who become prone to psychological disorders and issues. 
And while there is obviously health service that tries to uh, limit and uh, adjust anyone they de identify, but fundamentally, if you have a society which is individualistic, you're going to have quite a lot of people who become isolated. And this means it's very difficult for those people to be identified. The kind of all these issues combined uh, together, obviously drug taking, drug use, uh, as well as in a very individualistic society can create the kind of um, isolated loners uh, which might um, become either criminals of, of various kinds and some of them to the, the kinds that we saw uh, on that uh, very uh, sad day. In response to the attack, France's President Hollande has announced a war. In the public's view, will his announcement make Western Europe more or less of a target? Foreign affairs won't solve all our problems here. There will always be disagreements about it. We need to sort out our problems, like passing laws, like if someone isn't a French person and is on our territory. That person must behave themselves properly, otherwise they must leave the country. I don't think it changes how much of a target we are. We are our target, you can call it what you will, you can call it a, a campaign, a battle, a war. It, it, the, the word makes very little difference. What it is, is it's a sustained attack on our way of life in what I can only assume to be retaliation for potentially our attacks on their way of life. They should have known that this type of thing would happen when the Charlie Hebdo attack happened. There has been a sense of complacency, negligence, and it's ordinary people that pay the price. I am young and I'm studying and I'm tired of all of this. I'm thinking of my future, and just to know that whilst I'm relaxing, I could get gunned down. Whilst I'm drinking a cup of coffee, I could get gunned down. If I go to a concert, I could get gunned down. The government has been very complacent. They are not listening to the people. We no longer live in a democracy today. All this stuff about we're going to fight ISIS is just PR. It's just publicity. It's just television. It's just to impress people. Who are we going to make war against? The enemy is everywhere, behind every person. We shouldn't just point the finger at those with beards. It's complicated. Well, for one thing, we'd expected uh, France to already be uh, waging a war against uh, ISIS because that's what they'd been claiming to be doing for many years, at the very least trying to weaken uh, these forms of terror networks. But of course that isn't true because France has been actively funding and supporting groups operating in Syria, which we know were allied to ISIS and affiliates Jabhat al-Nusra. Uh, I think the uh, phrase uttered by Francois Hollande really reveals that uh, there is no strategy or no coherence to his politics because on the one hand he'd recently announced the lifting of the state of emergency. Then obviously after this Without any news of the nature of the attack, he immediately jumped to the conclusion that it was a terrorist attack, that there, there needed to be far more involvement in the Middle East and of course targeting more Middle Easterners as a result. And I think it really shows that there is no coherence in his politics because the profile hadn't even emerged of what kind of attack this was. And we're seeing that basically during Francois Hollande's time, France has become a target. And I think the question now is, why is France such a target? I think French, the French political class needs to look at itself and seize and ask what it's been doing that has made, its, uh, that has made France into such a target. I think after every terror attack that's happened in France, the president has uh, declared war on uh, terrorism and uh, in any attack where there is suspected to be links to ISIS, the, war, the president uh, has also declared war on ISIS. I, I think the last one was the Bataclan attack in uh, last year. But I don't think that this is, this is going to make France safer. Um, one, one, if one, many people who've looked into, the, into this matter have seen that uh, French engagement on international affairs using its military forces has made France generally more at risk from attack by international terror groups. Uh, who will, uh, who, for example, in the case of ISIS, uh, declared war on France in retaliation for French um, military involvement in, in, in Syria and Iraq. 
But prior to that, the, the French, France has had involvement in West Africa and, of course, um, other countries around the world. Uh, so I don't think that um, a military solution will make the French people safer. France is home to the biggest Muslim community in Europe, estimated at five million people, most descended from its former northern African colonies. That includes Algeria, where hundreds of thousands died during the War of Independence. Job discrimination has added to the divisions, with third and even fourth generation immigrants claiming they are not made to feel properly French. If France wants to protect its citizens, why has it been supporting the training and arming of unidentified militants in Syria to overthrow the elected government? We asked the public. Bah, déjà, déjà, le problème de la Syrie, déjà, je, je, les attentats viennent de là. The attacks are coming from Syria. Bashar al-Assad might be a dictator, but we should leave him alone and not try to overthrow him. He's not a democrat, but he's secular. He doesn't have a beard and he doesn't wear a jalabiya. He doesn't even go to the mosque. Just leave him alone and leave his country alone. All the problems we have here come from over there. Well, it's amazing how quickly someone can turn from being your ally to your enemy. And so today we're there, we're training them, we're helping them. The next moment, you know, they're, they're the government that we're trying to then overthrow. I don't think our foreign policy is coherent, but anyway, as an ordinary citizen, what we expect is to be safe here. Foreign affairs are a bit of real politique, it's a bit pragmatic, but now I expect strong measures internally because we are at war. We need to pass laws that reflect that state of war. Well, that's the exact question. I think that across Western Europe, when the conflict in Syria erupted, the discourse was very much that Bashar al-Assad was the root of all evil. And there was an almost tacit nudging of Europe's Muslim community to actually rise up and go and do and perform their duty in attacking uh, Assad. So what they were doing is they were looking to sort of engage all the disenfranchised youth of the banlieue in, in France or all the, you know, the working class areas across Europe where you have a high concentration of Muslims who are unemployed, etc and they were almost encouraged them, encouraging them to travel to Syria to fight Assad. So they went there thinking that you know, these youths would go there, thinking they would perform their duty in the name of Islam, gain training, uh, mingle with real you know, bad terrorists who were involved in the worst possible crimes, and then obviously perhaps come back disillusioned with the nature of the conflict there. But once returning to Europe, then they were told that they were terrorists and they were involved in terrorist activity. So they were once again marginalized. And in that sort of confusion and in that atmosphere, you have the perfect uh, ex uh, ingredients, really the perfect storm, whereby all these people become perfect recruits for, for, for terrorist organizations. I think really the, the real issue is, um, is really just French involvement full stop in, in military affairs uh, around the world. Um, if they deploy their military forces in other countries, uh, this doesn't really create uh, a world that, that's safer. It just in heart, it, it creates and expands the conflagration that's happening around the world. And, and it's, then it, this conflagration will spread to all different parts of the world. So I think that um, countries which are peaceful and have neutral foreign policies um, it or can be observed that they don't suffer these kinds of, of problems. And I think this is something that um, everyone should, should bear in mind and that if we are trying to reduce violence in the world, we shouldn't be adding to it. Experts say that amongst European countries, France is targeted due to unprovoked attacks and colonization of African states, its attacks on Middle Eastern countries and mistreatment of ethnic minorities. Why, in the public's view, is France regularly targeted? France says it's attacking terrorists so it can defend itself better, but it's not like that. Here we have five million people that are of Muslim origin. They are here in France, present, and they all believe in the Muslim religion. I don't think France should sell arms to countries that are in danger because those weapons end up attacking us. We should stop selling weapons to countries that have terrorist ideas. I suppose, for example, it's a revenge. 
This is like revenge, what we have done to their countries, they are taking revenge for it. C'est des psychopathes, ça s'explique pas. Moi je me dis, voilà, c'est des gens, ils sont... These guys are psychopaths, and it's not easy to explain the behavior of psychopaths. They are crazy. Religion is an excuse, and it's just a pretext. Real religion is about loving your neighbor. That is in all religions, but to use religion to kill children, women, anyone, that is just the actions of a psychopath. There is no explanation for that. Eh bien, je pense que d'abord qu'on a, on a été un petit peu candide sur cette histoire de, de, de révolution arabe. We were a little bit overly optimistic about this Arab Spring thing, and now we are paying the price for our policies which aren't realistic. We didn't see the reality. It wasn't really an Arab Spring. It was rather Islamists that came to the forefront. It was an Islamist uprising. Well, that's exactly it. If you have a policy of actually nudging certain class of your citizens into going to fight, you will actually, you know, somebody who's comfortable, who's got a good job, who's got a good quality of life, is not going to be tempted to travel to Syria. Whereas the more you have these people who are marginalized, the more they're likely to heed the call and actually travel to the Middle East. In France, they're quite numerous. In France, France has a very, very serious problem of racism and bigotry. Islamophobia in France is completely mainstream. And some of the things that you're hearing from mainstream politicians, and, and I'm not just talking about the far right politicians, I'm talking about mainstream politicians, is absolutely appalling and it is forcing many Muslims to wonder you know what is their future in this country many have chosen exile because they're from far more comfortable uh, backgrounds that they've studied that they've managed to find outlets to actually channel that anger and not engage in any violence but of course for those who are stuck in almost ghettos on the outskirts of France's major cities that has become a sort of a festering ground for, for terrorism. And this is why France is actually a target. It's as much Islamic terrorism, in the case of perhaps Charlie Hebdo, etc., as it is a sense of marginalization. There was a recent study that noted that Francophone countries, so countries where French is predominant language, seem to encounter more terrorist-related violence than non-Francophone countries. Uh, the reasons for that haven't really been identified by the study. It was just noticed in the, the statistics. What I would say is that France has a colonial past and a colonial history. It has done many atrocities in its, in its long history against countries around the world, against peoples around the world. And I think that this, um, the xenophobia that was behind that mentality in its colonialism hasn't really disappeared and perpetuates itself in different ways. Um, xenophobia towards minorities, towards uh, uh, non-European races, um, all this kind of racism and xenophobia, it's still present and sh should be addressed. I mean, obviously, admittedly, you know, many French people aren't racist and aren't xenophobic, but it's certain, xenophobia is certainly less opposed in France than it is in uh, non-Francophone countries. And we see that the French relationship with its minorities is not as successful as um, other Western countries have uh, managed to uh, treat their minorities, for example, Canada, Ireland and, and other such countries. The agreement that carved up Iraq and Syria between France and Britain is often cited by Daesh as the root of the region's problems. This colonial history makes France one of Daesh's principal recruitment targets. Today, France appears to many an Islamophobic nation with a hugely destructive foreign policy. ISIL grew from the Western invasion of Iraq and thrived in a Syrian war which France supported. While the West has largely ignored this, it cannot ignore the terrible consequences.